So as another example for a proof by contrapositive, you remember when we talked about biconditionals? So you might recall that we had logical expressions that look like this, p if and only if q. So we saw that this was logically equivalent to p implies q and q implies p. So it turns out that a proof by a contrapositive can help us to prove a statement that uses a biconditional. So for example, if we had to prove a statement like the following, Let's consider this example. Prove that for every natural number n, n is even if and only if n squared is odd. And I can see that this is a biconditional statement right here because I have an if and only if. So if I wanted to try to prove this, first off, it might be a little bit easier to translate it back into some notation. So I could do the following notation. Let's go ahead and let P of N stand for the statement N is even. And let's let Q of N stand for the statement N squared is even. So if I were to translate this example right here using these propositional functions, then it would look like the following. What I want to show is that for every natural number, p of n, if and only if, q of n. Well, we know that p of n, if and only if, q of n is logically equivalent to, well, p of n implies q of n and q of n implies p of n. So we're really gonna have to do two separate steps here if we want to prove this biconditional statement. So in our proof, it's gonna take two steps. So our very first step, we have to choose which direction. Are we gonna prove P implies Q first or are we gonna prove Q implies P first? So just for the heck of it, I'm going to prove that P of N implies Q of N. This is referred to as the forward direction. And usually people abbreviate this simply by putting in parentheses a little arrow like that. And they're indicating that what they want to show is that P of N implies Q of N. I.e. for every natural number, N is even implies N squared is even. Well, it turns out if we think about this, it actually could be proved using a direct proof argument. So using a direct proof, recall that what I need to do is assume my hypothesis is true and I want to show that my conclusion is true. So my hypothesis in this case is N is even. So by definition, since n is even, there exists some number k such that n equals 2k. So I've assumed my hypothesis and I want to show that my conclusion is true. My conclusion here is n squared is even. Thankfully here I have an expression for n so I can easily connect up n and n squared simply by taking this expression and squaring both sides. So here, I'm going to substitute in 2k 
for our n right here. And this thing will simplify down to 4k squared. You can see that, yes, indeed, this is an even number because I can factor out a 2. And so I have successfully shown that n squared is, odd, <laughs> is even. Great. So there exists a t. In fact, I showed you that t. That t is 2k squared right here. And so that means that indeed n squared is even. And that was my statement q of n. And I am finished. So this forward direction, I could simply use a direct proof to be able to show it. But remember, we're trying to show a biconditional in if and only if. So I've only finished the first half of my proof. I and or also need to show the other direction. So for our second part of the proof, I need to do what's referred to as the reverse direction. And here again, usually this is abbreviated, they'll put in parentheses, a backwards arrow right here to indicate that we are now trying to show that Q of n implies P of n. So what we really want to show, so abbreviating again, want to show, we want to show the reverse direction. Q implies P. So Q implies P. Or put into words, If n squared is even, then n is even. Well, we could try a direct proof right here. And if we did a little bit of scratch work, we could try something like, well, if it's a direct proof, I assume my hypothesis, my hypothesis here is that n squared is even. So that means there exists some integer such that n squared equals 2k. And now I have to somehow show that n is even. So, well, the only way that I could get from this n over to n would be by taking square roots. And then I get n equals square root of 2k. How am I going to show that that is an even number? That doesn't really seem like it's going to work. Yeah, so the direct proof... looks hard in this case. So instead, let's go ahead and see if we can use the contrapositive to make this reverse direction a little bit easier to show. So I'm going to take this statement and I'm going to consider a proof by contrapositive of it. So if we want to argue contrapositively to prove this statement, that means I want to show for every n, and I take the contrapositive of this implication right here. So what does that say? For every natural number, n is not even implies n squared is not even. Well, that's easy enough. N not being even, that just means it's odd. So we're going to assume that N is odd, and what we want to show is that N squared is odd. So if it's odd, that means there exists some other integer k, such that n equals 2k plus 1. 
And now I can easily connect up my n and my n squared simply by squaring this expression right here. I don't have to worry about square roots or anything like I did in the direct proof technique. So here I'm going to square both sides and I get n squared and square that equation. And we've seen expressions like this before. We can simply factor out a two out of our first couple of terms. and I can go ahead and conclude my proof. Because I've been able to successfully show that there exists some integer t such that n squared equals 2t plus 1, i.e. n squared is odd. And that's what I was trying to show. I was trying to show that n squared is not even, i.e. that it's odd. So here in this example, we had a biconditional, and we have to show both the forward direction and the reverse direction. Oftentimes, it will be helpful to use different proof techniques for each one of those directions. And we saw it here. In the forward direction, we could simply use a direct proof, and it was straightforward to do. In the reverse direction, trying a direct proof was more difficult, so we decided to use a proof by contrapositive, and it made it easier. Any of the different proof techniques that we're going to talk about are going to be applicable to situations like this. If you have a biconditional statement and you have to show both directions, the forward and the reverse, sometimes you might need to use one proof technique for one direction and a different proof technique for a different direction.